So good evening, everybody. We are live now, and we can proceed. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, uh, today's presentation, uh, which is going to be by Dr. Arvind Gupta on uh, clinical examination of the shoulder. As you know, the DNB theory exams uh, have just been over, and uh, in the near future, the practicals and the clinical exercises, clinical uh, cases are going to be held. We are not sure whether it'll be virtual or uh, in uh, actual patients, but either way, the examination is important. You could get uh, shown a slide of a clinical uh, test, and you may have to sort of uh, let the examiner know what the test is and what you hope to elicit by that test. So I think the clinical examination of the shoulder can be a little confusing for people, but uh, if you go about it in a systematic way, uh, you should be able to uh, do a good clinical examination to come to a diagnosis. So I would request Dr. Arvind Gupta to uh, start his talk and uh, take us through the steps of a proper clinical examination of the shoulder. Thanks, uh, Arvind. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'll be talking on uh, the shoulder joint uh, examination. It's uh, basically exam oriented, uh, the examination of the shoulder joint is there. So, as uh, any other uh, examination, uh, the shoulder joint is also a start with the inspection with the exposure of both the shoulder at the same time with upper chest and the back also. And this inspection uh, should start with uh, inspection from the front, in which uh, we should see all the bony landmark, joint, muscle. Is there any muscle atrophy or swelling or anything else? Like in this case, we can see this part is prominent in comparison to other part. So lateral end of the clavicle is prominent there. So we can see, appreciate in the X-ray also where the lateral end of the clavicle is going high. So this is a fracture dislocation of the AC joint. Similarly, inspection from the back, in which uh, any abnormality of the scapula, prominence of the scapula, the neck should also be inspected at the same time. So this is a case of a spinal shoulder. As well as we should also see the fossa, that is supraspinatus fossa, infraspinatus fossa for any uh, muscle atrophy is there because many a time there is isolated infraspinatus uh, muscle atrophy in comparison to opposite side. That is supraescapular nerve neuropathy is there. And if there is rotator cuff tear is there, then we also again find the atrophy of the muscle in the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus. At the same time, we should also look for escapular dyskinesia, particularly those who are having the chronic uh, uh, pain in the shoulder joint. Right? Like in this case, we can see the medial border of the escapula on the left side is com uh, completely prominent is there. At the same time, there is hypertrophy of the trapezius muscle in comparison to opposite side. So this is it. Uh, a type two type of escapular dyskinesia. So this was a case of uh, chronic type three AC joint dislocation. And the hypertrophy of the trapezius muscle was there to compensate for the AC joint dislocation. So this uh, should also be focused when you deal with the chronic uh, shoulder pain. Next is inspection from the uh, side. In, each, in this case, we can see the complete atrophy of the deltoid muscle and there is increased distance between the lateral end of the clavicle and the humeral head is there. Next is the uh, inspection when the shoulder joint is abducted and uh, flex elbow. In this case, we can identify the Popeye sign, uh, which is uh, basically the tear of the long head of the biceps. And usually patient have not any complaint, even patient not uh, notice this and patient remain happy with this. But when you do the abduction and the flexion of the elbow joint, this sign become prominent. So this is the Popeye sign. The next is uh, the, uh, the mm -hmm. inspection for the winging of the escapula. Uh, this is the test for the serratus anterior muscle in which uh, the wall place on, uh, hand place on the wall with arm in abduction and do the push uh, forward. 
and look for the prominence of the escape line. If there is symmetrical elevation of the escape line is there, usually serratus anterior place the escape line into the chest with this, into the back. But when there is injury to this serratus anterior or nerve supply to the serratus anterior, this border get prominent. So this is called, called as the winging of escape law on pressing over the wall. Uh, after inspection part is completed, then we should uh, proceed for the palpation. Palpation should be done for all the bony landmark, all the joint line, like a sternoclavicular, acromioclavicular joint, the glenohumeral joint, and the coracoid process. This is very important. One sign that is called as coracoid pain test, which is very sensitive for uh, the frozen shoulder. All stiff shoulder are not frozen shoulder. So this test, that is coracoid pain test, help in differentiating whether it's true frozen shoulder or it's false frozen shoulder. When there is tenderness around the coracoid, associated with the stiffness of the shoulder joint, very high sensitivity test for this uh, frozen shoulder because the coracohumeral ligament that is attached with the coracoid is the first structure which is involved in the frozen shoulder. At the same time, involvement of the biceps tendon in the bicipital groove for bicep biceps tendonitis is also very sensitive test. Next is the range of motion. This, uh, the uh, the flexion is almost 180 degree, extension is 50 degree, abduction is again 180 degree, adduction is around, around 50 to 60 degree. And internal rotation, at least uh, after placing the arm over the back, of, and at least the lower border of escape now we should touch. This is the um, standard internal rotation and the external rotation by the side uh, arm in the side of the body and do the outward movement that is the external rotation. For all these movement uh, tests, the apply gives the apply scratch test with the opposite hand. Uh, if uh, the patient is able to touch the upper border of escape law, then his external rotation and abduction is full. Similarly, if touch the lower border of escape law with the opposite hand, it means the internal rotation and the adduction is full. This is called as the apply scratch test. The newer test added is the cross body adduction test. Uh, this test uh, is done by uh, 90 degree of uh, the flexion of the shoulder joint and the fully adduction. This test is very sensitive for the AC joint. So a uh, shoulder is having very uh, high uh, range of motion that is in fact, the daily uh, living activity is not needed uh, that much amount of movement. So recently in general of shoulder and elbow surgery in 2012, it was published. What should be the amount of uh, motion required for the daily routine activity? So flexion was only 120 degree needed. Extension was 45 degree. Similarly, abduction is again around 40, 50 degree less. Adduction is also only uh, 25 degree was needed. Similarly, only 50% of the external and internal rotation was needed for the daily uh, living activity. This is also very important, particularly while treating uh, the patient for the shoulder joint pathology also. So whenever we are uh, examining the patient for those who are having the shoulder joint uh, pain, we should always uh, keep in mind about the referred pain to the shoulder joint. The most common place is the cervical spine. Next is the myofascial trigger point. Uh, apical lung cancer also present same side shoulder joint pain. Angina on the left side. Similarly, any spleen injury on the left shoulder. Gallbladder on the right shoulder and carpal tunnel syndrome also leads to referred pain to the shoulder joint. So these uh, pathology also should keep in mind. Then after this generalized test, the special test uh, is described uh, around the shoulder joint, particularly for the rotator cuff tear, any instability, impingement, biceps tendon, and the AC joint disorder. We will start with the rotator cuff tear. When is the first test is the job test, uh, also called as the empty can test. We is the 90 degree of the abduction of the shoulder and the 30 degree of uh, flexion, uh, forward flexion. In this, uh, the humeral, humerus comes in the line of the supraspinatus. Uh, 
with the 90 degree of abduction and the 30 degree of forward flexion and then do the fully internal rotation of the shoulder joint so that thumb is down now patient is asked to lift the arm against the resistant so any pathology with this supraspinal tendon this test is positive only thing sometimes subacromial impingement or pain because of any pathology in the subacromial space this test also get positive so sensitivity and specificity of this test is around 75 percent next is the drop arm test this test is basically for the supraspinatus uh, muscle again sensitivity and specificity is around uh, uh, 70 75 percent in each uh, patient is uh, uh, patient arm is lifted to 90 to 120 degree of abduction and then patient is asked to uh, do the slow downward movement of the arm but he is unable to perform this because of uh, the pathology of the supraspinatus that is tear of the supraspinatus so this test is called as drop arm test next test is for the infraspinatus uh, in which the arm is uh, uh, kept in the side of the body with elbow is 90 degree of flexion and now patient is asked to do the external rotation independently and also against the resistant if patient is having in uh, doing this uh, against the resistant it means this test is uh, positive there is a uh, problem with the infraspinatus also uh, but uh, at this uh, uh, sidewise uh, the placement of the uh, this shoulder joint this external rotation at this position is also done by the posterior um, uh, part of the deltoid so to remove the effect of this posterior part of the deltoid arm is uh, placed arm is uh, placed in uh, abduction uh, 90 degree of abduction and this uh, elbow is flex uh, at uh, the 90 degree there and in this position now patient is asked to do the external rotation and uh, at this uh, position there is effect there is no effect of the deltoid over the uh, this external rotation in 90 degree of abduction and uh, 90 degree of elbow flexion Any problem, sir? A uh, little bit. This, uh, this is getting slow. This will get uh, okay in a couple of uh, seconds. Sorry. What is the issue, Janki? Uh, this uh, uh, slide is not getting perceived. Oh, ah, okay. You can switch off and switch on, sir. Yeah. Stop sharing and share again. Yeah. In between, if someone have any question, please ask. Sir, is here to answer. Till now, it was going. Uh, no, uh, it was going okay, or it was. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just fine. Fine, sir. Okay. No problem. You can share again. This is a problem with your computer. Yeah, not, uh, not with the live. Yeah. Then yeah. this is. So close the thing and open it again, and then see. Yeah. yeah. Close the presentation and open it again. Yeah. Meanwhile, we can do some discussion. Uh, yeah. yeah. So.
Yes. So I think uh, one thing I want to mention here uh, that uh, probably this is important for all of you that uh, what we used to do mistakes while doing the shoulder joint, like uh, we are uh, usually not uh, examining the patient from the behind, what mistake I have did uh, while presenting it. And one thing which we used to forget is about the handedness. We should uh, uh, tell the examiner about the dominant hand, uh, which one is dominant hand of the patient. And uh, when we are uh, doing the examination, we should expose till the waist. And uh, the we should also confuse for the range of motion of the elbow that uh, sometimes when it is like that, this is 90 degree, but this one, sometimes we call it like 30 degree or so. So we should remember that this one is zero degree. From here, we can start the elbow movement. And so the range is also confusing. And when we are uh, telling the in the exam, what is the range? Then in that one from the zero, we should start like zero to 90 degree, not like 90 degree. That uh, That is a common mistake. What we used to do uh, when we are examining. And uh, so, uh, well, uh, I think once the elbow uh, the range of motion, I think is now should be fairly uniform that zero is full extension. Okay, so early on, you would start from 90 degrees flexion. And then as you extended, you measured extension. And as you flexed it, you measured flexion. Okay, yes, but now zero degrees is full extension. If it goes beyond zero, it is hyperextension. And then flexion starts from that. Uh, at 90 degrees, it's 90 degrees flexion. Any more, it is 120, 130 degrees flexion. Okay. So yes. I think that has now become fairly standardized. You just need to be sure that you follow this uh, method rather than the older method of uh, starting from 90 degrees and then uh, working out your flexion and extension. Okay. Yes. So, uh, Arvind, you're ready or? Yeah, uh, I'm ready. Uh, can you see the screen, my screen? Yeah, we yes. can see your screen. Go to the next slide and then start. Yeah. Go to, ah, uh, yeah, this is the one in uh, abduction. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, uh, when uh, shoulder is in abduction, so effect of the deltoid is not there. So, here only the infraspinatus is working. So in this position, patient is asked to keep the shoulder in external rotation. If he failing to do this, it means there is problem with the infraspinatus. The next is the external rotation lag test is there. In each, this test is for the supraspinatus and infraspinatus both. In each elbow is 90 degree flex and the shoulder is elevated in the scapular plane. And then external rotation is uh, done by the examiner and the patient is asked to keep uh, in external rotation while holding the arm in the uh, this uh, 30 degree of flexion. If he is unable to do this, it means there is problem with the both supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Next is the drop sign. This sign is basically done for uh, this, uh, the examiner this uh, for the infraspinatus muscle with the arm is 90 degree of abduction and the external rotation. In this position, you can see the external rotation is done by mainly the teres minor and the infraspinatus only. So this test is done for uh, uh, infraspinatus and teres. Here you can see the external rotation was done by the teres minor and the external rotation. So if patient is unable to keep the arm in this external rotation position, this is called as the drop arm sign, drop sign test. Next is horn blower sign or the pate test. This test is uh, usually done with the 90 degree of abduction of the shoulder joint with the external rotation of the elbow. Uh, ex flexion of the elbow with external rotation. Now patient is asked to bring both the hand to the mouth 
and look for there is there should not be any elevation of the elbow that is the abduction further abduction this is the isolated test for the teres minor the next is uh, for this uh, the subscap test uh, subscap is the strong internal rotator of uh, the humerus which attaches over the lesser tuberosity and uh, this test is usually uh, there are three tests for the subscapsularis muscle the one is the lift off test another is belly press test and next is the bear hug test we'll see separate uh, separately the lift off test in which the hand is kept on the back and then lift the hand and this lifting is done by the further internal rotation of the shoulder so it means the subscap is working and with full strength after doing patient then this should be done against resistance also if he is unable to perform this it means there is pathology with the subscap and the next test is uh, the belly press test when each hand is placed on the belly with uh, 90 degree of flexion of the elbow a no patient is asked to do uh, the pressing of the belly this can be done by the internal rotation of the shoulder joint like this here you can see there is internal rotation of the shoulder joint and this is because of the subscap when there is pathology with the subscap this is not possible by the internal rotation this is not possible by the internal rotation and elbow fall back so that this is done at the level of elbow only not by the shoulder shoulder level so when you, if, if you see when there is pathology of the subscap this elbow is falling back so this is not because of internal rotation of the humerus this is because of humerus is elbow is falling back and that leads to pressing of the belly so when it is there this is this test is positive it means there is pathology with the the subscap the next test is the bear hug test in which the arm uh, palm is placed on the opposite shoulder and this arm is get lifted from there by the examiner and patient has to hold the palm at opposite shoulder so when there is a problem with the subscap this is not possible by the patient to keep the arm hand there so this test is positive this is called as Uh, the bear hug test in all the three tests there is internal rotators of the shoulder is active that is subscap when there is pathology with this the internal rotation is not possible it means the test is uh, positive also uh, when there is a tear with the subscap is there then there will be uh, increase external rotation of the shoulder joint you can see there is uh, till that there is a ex normal external rotation and once this subscap is torn from the lesser tuberosity there is will be increase external rotation now you can see there is excessive external rotation of the shoulder joint so it means uh, the excessive external rotation of shoulder joint is one of the sign for tear of the subscap so these four test is very important for subscapsularis so this patient having uh, was referred to me uh, for repair of the supraspinatus infraspinatus and ter teres minor and subscap all the rotator cuff pathology was torn and referred to me for this uh, reconstruction so repair you can see drop arm test was positive patient was unable to do internal rotation of the shoulder joint as well as external rotation of the shoulder joint and there was problem at the elbow also you can see the flexion and extension was not possible here yeah. and then the back examination was done there was full mark atrophy of this uh, infraspinatus fossa supraspinatus whole deltoid was atrophied and the shoulder is was getting subluxated so in spite of being all the test for the rotator cuff tear was positive and this patient was having problem with the elbow also that should not be happen with the rotator cuff injury so this patient was not able to flex the elbow or extend the elbow you can see here so patient was not able to do the flexion of the elbow as well as the extension of the elbow actively 
So this was the pathology for the brachial plexus. So differentiation of both the sides. Like sometimes brachial plexus injury will diagnose as the rotator cuff tear and sometimes rotator cuff tear is also diagnosed as the brachial plexus injury. So this differentiation is very important by doing the neurological test. So this was the case of uh, brachial plexus injury and manage accordingly that. Though MRI was saying there is tear and atrophy of the supraspinatus, infraspinatus and all this. So clinical test is very important along with the radiological examination. The next is test for the instability, which may be provocative test or the quantitative test. Like for the anterior instability, this is the apprehension test, which is done in the 90 degree of abduction with uh, 90 degree of flexion of the shoulder joint. And then the external rotation should be performed, like in this case. And this look for the apprehension of the patient. Patient uh, will not allow to the further external rotation. So this is the apprehension test. Another test is the mid-range instability test. When the uh, uh, dislocation of the shoulder joint is associated with the marked uh, bony lesion, either of the glenoid or very big heel sacs is there, then this test is called as the mid-range instability. Here you can see this instability is, mid-range instability is performed in around uh, 45 degree of abduction only and the external rotation. And here the test is positive, it means this patient is having uh, the problem with the bony problem also. This test was recently uh, described by the Jody Beer and the Burkhardt. The next is the sulcus, sulcus test. In which the elbow is flexed 90 degree and the downward uh, traction was given to the shoulder joint and look for the increased distance between the lateral end of the acromion and the humeral head. If it is more than two centimeter distance is there, then this test is again positive. Next is the job relocation test in which patient is in supine with the 90 degree of abduction with the 90 degree of flexion and the, nine, and the further external rotation will lead to subluxation of the shoulder joint. And this condition, when we apply the, the force uh, downward so that this shoulder joint get reduced and patient will have relief. So that's why this is called as relocation test. Next test is fulcrum test. Again, arm uh, is placed, hand is placed under the shoulder joint in 90 degree of abduction and the further extens as extension of external rotation of the shoulder joint done, the patient apprehension will be appreciated. Next is load and the shift, uh, shift test, which is quantitative test. Stabilize the scapula with one hand and hold the humeral head with other hand and do the anterior translation as well as the posterior translation. If anterior translation is almost more than 30% of the diameter of the humeral head, then this test is positive. And the posterior translation is more than 50% of the humeral head, then the posterior translation, is, it means there is laxity of the, the capsule joint, is shoulder joint is there. Again, uh, another provocative test is the jerk test. This is for the posterior instability. This is uh, very important, particularly in thrower and those who are in the posterior labrum tear. In which the shoulder joint should be stabilized with one hand and 90 degree of abduction and the internal rotation. Axial force should be applied and look for any subluxation posterior inferiorly. Very high sensitive and the specific uh, specificity of this test, the posterior provocative jerk test. Uh, some patient will have the multidirectional instability. This may be because of the generalized laxity, or uh, this may be because of uh, the scapular abnormal mechanics. And some patient is having psychiatric problem. They think they are supreme or spider mind type of thing. And then they try to do the voluntary dislocation of the shoulder joint. So this, uh, whenever there is a voluntary dislocation, the generalized laxity should always be checked. Next test, uh, test for the impingement syndrome, in which there is, uh, first is the painful arc syndrome is there. And uh, abduction of the shoulder joint uh, start, pain has started in between 60 to 120 degree. It means there is some pathology in the subacromial space or rotator cuff tendon. 
The next is the niche impingement uh, test, having sensitivity and specificity in between 60 to 70 percent. We need the arm is uh, uh, um, uh, abducted and flexed in between. And then internally rotation of the shoulder joint is done and look for any pathology uh, in the subacromial space in form patient will say there is pain or Dark weakness. Yeah. You, can see, yeah. you can see the greater tuberosity comes under the acromion and this leads to the pain. So next Dark. is uh, impingement uh, test by putting the jalocane under the shoulder joint. And if this pain of the knee's impingement goes, it means there is pathology and subacromial space and this become confirmatory test. Next is the Hawkins-Kennedy test. It is done with the 90 degree of the flexion of the uh, um, arm with full internal rotation of the Great shoulder joint which look for there is generates pain. look for any pain there. This test is uh, uh, positive and there is pain or weakness in this case. So this is for the Hawkins Kennedy. The next is for the Yocum test. You need to, uh, this is almost like Hawkins Kennedy test only. Only uh, modification is the 30 degree forward flexion of the shoulder joint. So again, this test is for the impingement. The next is uh, the intern internal impingement test. All the test was external impingement test that was outside the capsule. So next is the internal impingement test. We need the shoulder is in abduction and the external rotation. And in this position, if there is infraspinatus impingement occur in the superior lateral aspect of the glenoid or the labrum, then this test is positive. Here you can see the infraspinatus get impinged over the superior lateral aspect of the glenoid. So this test usually a positive in case of thrower, those who are regular thrower having this test positive. Again, this test having sensitivity, sensitivity and specificity is more than 90%. The next is a test for the biceps tendon. The first is tenderness in the bicipital groove. Then the Yergeson test, sensitivity is low, but specificity is very high. This test, the arm is in the side of the body with elbow is 90 degree of flexion. And the percent uh, arm get hold by the examiner in the, the pronated position. Then patient is asked to do the supination of the forearm. This test is basically by the transverse humeral ligament. When it is torn and patient try to do this uh, supination, of the forearm, this biceps tendon get dislocated from the bicipital groove and patient will have cruciating pain. So specificity is very high, but sensitivity is not very high. Next is the speed test. Again, specificity is high. We need the arm is uh, in 30 degree of uh, flexion and the elbow is fully extended and the supinated. And then patient has to raise uh, the arm when against the resistant by the examiner. And when the pain get appreciated in the bicipital group, this test is positive. This test was discovered by the speed. And when he used to do the straight leg raise for, for examining the spine patient, he has pain in the bicipital group. Now there is modification for this speed test, which was done in 90 degree of flexion of the shoulder joint with full extension and supination and patient has to raise this. Next is test for the slap lesion. Slap is the avulsion of the superior part of the labrum, anterior and posterior, where long head of the biceps get attached. This is uh, the O brand test, having sensitivity is high, but specificity is not very high. With the 90 degree of the flexion of the shoulder joint with 10 degree of the adduction with maximum internal rotation. Thumb is down. If patient is having pain in the shoulder joint in this condition, it means this test is positive. And this pain usually goes when thumb is up. That is the external rotation of the shoulder. The pain goes up. This means the O-brain test is positive. Next is the crank test. We need the shoulder is abducted to the 90 degree. And the internal and external rotation of the shoulder joint is done. And look for any clicking, catching sensation. This is again uh, for the superior labral tear. 
next test is done for the ac joint disorder in which the movement usually occur in between 120 to 180 degree and any tenderness around the arctic uh, in the ac joint there is very sensitive for ac joint problem also patient will have problem in lying down on the affected side of the shoulder if there is any problem of the ac joint because on lateral lying down position all the force get transmitted from the ac joint so this get uh, painful so patient will give history when he used to lie uh, on the, the affected side of the shoulder he is having pain in this area next uh, test for the ac joint is cross body adduction test in which the arm is flex 90 degree and fully adducted and patient is having pain because of the uh, adduction there is problem with if there is problem with the ac joint next again a very specific test for ac joint is the o brand test in which the on doing the internal rotation and the uh, movement again the resistance this humeral get in contact with the acromion and if there is problem with the ac joint this get up and that leads to pain to this joint thank you okay so any questions yes sir in the chat box uh, amit and gautam has asked few question okay uh, amit has three tests which are very confusing for him uh, which require flexion and internal rotation. These are job test, near impingement sign, and opening test okay. for slap lesion. So, uh, can you please explain to that one, sir? Yeah. So, in job test, the shoulder is abducted and fully internally rotated. For O brand test, the shoulder joint is flex and adducted. So in Oberon, you have to do ADD and in job test, you have to do ABD, okay? And in Niels test, there is full uh, a flexion of the shoulder joint with internal rotation. So in Niels test, there is full flexion. In job test, there is full abduction so that your shoulder, hum uh, this humerus comes in the line of the supraspinatus and then uh, the Ah, thumbs is, is down. This is also called as empty can test. And for O brand, this is adduction, A ADD with internal rotation of the shoulder. Sir, Sir Gautam wants to know, can anyone uh, quantify the pathology of severity of clinical test by clinical test only? Yeah, you... like uh, for subscap lesion, if uh, this lift of test is present is able to do against the resistant not but not fully it means there is minor injury patient is can do without resistance but not against resistance it means there is moderate grade of injury and even without any resistance is patient is not able to do it means there is severe injury to the subscap so there is quantification also like sulcus uh, test also if it is two centimeter, then this is the mild laxity. If it is more than that, it is moderate or severe laxity. Similarly, uh, there is a translation of the humeral head with load and shift test. If there is 30% anterior translation, there is mild laxity. If it is 50% translation, moderate. If it is excessive translation, it means very severe laxity of the soda. Thank you, sir. You, you showed a whole lot of tests, okay? And one patient uh, who you see in the OPD, it's not possible to do all the tests, I presume. Yes. So which are the absolute essential tests in the exam which the exam candidate should show and demonstrate during his clinical examination? Uh, uh, inspection? Say, suppose it's a patient with suspected rotator cuff pathology. Okay. Yeah. So... After inspection and pulse, palpation, the standard examination part, if uh, a student comes to the standard test, uh, the this special test, then at least he should describe the job test, that is empty can test, that is for the rotator cuff, uh, the supraspinatus, then for the infraspinatus, at least external rotation uh, lag test, and then the for the teres minor, this is uh, the uh, pate test, 
or the horn blower. So at least one test for supraspinatus, one for test for the infraspinatus, that is external rotation loss, and the third test, that is horn blower test for uh, teres minor. And for the subscap, at least lift off test. These four tests uh, having uh, the sensitivity and specificity higher than any other test. So all these four tests for this uh, rotator cuff tear should be done. And for impingement, though Hawkins Kennedy test having sensitivity and specificity is more than the NIRS impingement test. But the NIRS impingement test is uh, described very earlier. So at least NIRS impingement and Hawkins Kennedy, these two tests should be uh, described by the uh, student to the exam. And sir, for instability? For instability, apprehension test is very easily uh, can be done. And it should be at 90 degree of abduction and uh, 90 degree of uh, this flexion of the elbow joint. The full external rotation should be tried. In this case, patient will, uh, uh, will try to escape the full external rotation. So apprehension test is, uh, should be performed. This is very sensitive test. Uh, sir, Amit has one more question about the frozen shoulder, sir. Uh, he wants to know how to diagnose frozen shoulder clinically, being it a diagnosis of exclusion. So, uh, frozen shoulder, usually in our practice, all the shoulder having uh, restriction of the movement is taken as the frozen shoulder. But it is not like that. This restriction may be because of... Uh, AC joint arthritis because of pain, maybe subacromial bursitis, maybe rotator cuff pathology will have this restriction of the movement. So the basic pathology of frozen shoulder is the coracoacromial ligament get thickened. So this start with the restriction of the external rotation and later on as inflammation progress, this leads to the inflammation around the capsule and the synovial. So slowly, slowly, all the movement get restricted. So for frozen shoulder, restriction of external rotation is uh, very important. So if there is full restriction of movement, but external rotation is almost more than 50 degree or 60 degree type of thing. So this is not a case of frozen shoulder. At the same time, the test called as coracoid pain test. If tenderness within two centimeter periphery uh, diameter of this coracoid uh, bony landmark, tenderness is there, then this is this test is very sensitive and specific for frozen shoulder. So this test also should be kept in mind. So also remember, don't use the term periarthritis. Okay, so this is a term which should not be used one way or the other. Okay. It's a term which has been used for frozen shoulder. I think adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder are acceptable, although we still don't know clearly what the pathology is, but certainly periarthritis is not what it is in pathology or in terminology. Okay. So you have mentioned about the teres minor test, but teres minor is a very thin muscle cell. So that is... A Isolated tear of teres minor, uh, is it common, sir? Uh, it's not very common. It's very rare. And usually teres minor works with the infraspinatus. So uh, the for the independent teres minor test, this is the horn blower. When is the arm is abducted to the 90 degree and the elbow is flexed. And also the full external rotation of the elbow joint, uh, shoulder joint is done. Now, in this position, external rotation, patient is asked to touch the mouth. So, if teres minor is intact, this can be done. But when teres minor is torn, in spite of being intact, uh, the infraspinatus, this shoulder, uh, this get full uh, more abducted to bring the arm down to the mouth. That's why this is called as horn blower test. And in rest, other, it's always work with the uh, infraspinatus. But there is isolated tear of this infraspinatus. But so, mostly. Okay, okay. So, also, you should know why the tests are called a particular thing. Okay. So, for example, horn blowers test. Why is it called a horn blowers test? Because you need to get the arm into that position to 
blow the horn okay for whatever the either your musical instrument or for blowing a horn for any other reason it's not like honing your car but blowing a horn okay so like a conch or something like that if you want to so otherwise it's not named after any uh, person so, sir, so don't say horn blower was a famous surgeon or something like that if someone asks you about that similarly uh, the napoleon's uh, belly press test why is it called napoleon dnb guys don't know sir you should know yes sir so arvind sir please <laughs> <laughs> so this is after the famous emperor napoleon bonaparte okay he used to keep his hand and you see any photograph of his his yes. hand is there on his belly okay? yeah. Yeah? so that's why it's called and it's got nothing to do with any person who's described the test okay so although a lot of the other tests are named after surgeons who have described the test remember that some of these are based on uh, uh, like for example you have another classical example of the scapholunate instability called the terry thomas terry. Okay? Yes. it's based on a right uk this uk the gap between the gap in his teeth okay teeth yeah, yeah. So okay. that's why it's called Terry Thomas test, not because some famous surgeon by the name of Terry Thomas described that test. Okay, so try to get to why a particular test is named. Is it after a surgeon? Is it after a person, or after some other peculiarity that it's named? Okay. Uh, so, so, sir, you ask yeah. the surgeon. Some examiner might just want to ask you that, especially if you take the name. Okay, if you just say. belly press test he may not ask you about napoleon but if you say napoleon he might ask you well who was napoleon yeah sir sorry to ask but what is the relevance of this history part which history part matlab sir kisi bhi orthopedic surgeon ke named hai uska history puchte hain exams because the such examiner can ask you why is it called that okay if ha yes, uh, matlab uska relevance kya hai sir matlab मतलब मतलब इस वाइस व्हाई एनीवन शुड नो अबाउट द सो कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ समवन सो इफ यू वांट टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाई इट्स कॉल्ड दैट देन यू नीड टू नो दैट या ओके सो जस्ट वांट टू क्रैम इट एंड से इट दैट्स अ डिफरेंट थिंग ऑल टुगेदर ओके ओके आई थिंक इट्स मोर इंपॉर्टेंट टू ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड व्हाई समथिंग इज कॉल्ड देन यू विल अंडरस्टैंड द टेस्ट बेटर एज़ वेल या या एंड आल्सो इजी टू रिमेंबर सो कैन so oh sir for that one belly press test and lift off test that is for infraspinatus as well as teres minor right sir so no, this is for the subscap subscap oh, sorry yeah. belly press or lift off is required for, yeah for internal rotation of the shoulder shoulder okay, okay yeah That's... so if you see the shoulder when you do the belly press it means the internal rotation of the shoulder is needed so subscap has to be there to perform that activity if subscap is not there it means this test will not be performed so this test is positive so lift for lifting the palm from back of the uh, your back this leads the further internal rotation of the shoulder in one in that only so you can lift the uh, palm from your back so this uh, sub, uh, subscap has to be intact for that activity Uh, Arvind, I think another important thing would be if you would demonstrate what we mean by flexion, extension in the shoulder because of the plane of the scapula. Okay, because everyone talks about flexion going straight forward, but when you're talking about flexion of the shoulder joint, you're talking about a specific motion. Yeah. yeah. So, so if, if you can demonstrate it, if you can stand yeah. up and demonstrate it to everybody, so that they understand what plane they should be. yeah talking about flexion or demonstrating flexion extension etc this is this shoulder is fine sir yeah, yeah. so normally the uh, scapula is in 30 degree of uh, flexion is there so there is two type of flexion one is along the body side if you do in the plane of the we've lost your net
Yes. Okay, so we could. Uh, yeah. Arvind, we've lost you. Sir, uh, I think few of the examiner accept that forward flexion this way also. And yeah, so need... but you should be clear about what you're sh yeah. showing so that you can explain the. So when you say forward flexion, you're talking about straight. That's why you call it forward flexion, okay? Yes. And flexion in the plane of the scapula, then it's at a slightly different plane, okay? Yes. So you should understand the plane of the scapula as well, okay? Yeah. Uh, Avinas and Sumit must have some questions. Avinas, you can ask now. Uh, in between, Amit has one question, sir. He want to know how is that in cubitus varus deformity, internal rotation of shoulder is increased. So, what what is the cubitus varus deformity, Amit? Yeah, Amit, sir, it is the deviation of the forearm from its normal axis outward towards uh, outwards away from the outwards. body. Forearm away from the body is cubitus varus. That's interesting. Yes, it is towards the body. It is towards the body. Deviation of the axis of the forearm towards the body. Okay, so so now do you think it's a pure coronal plane a def a deformity or there's a rotational element to it? There is a rotational element to it. So which way is the rotation? Towards the medial side. Internal rotation, okay? Yes, sir. So if you check the arm, the rotation will be more internally than externally, okay? Because distally it is more internally rotated. Okay? After all, you're looking at the elbow when you're looking at rotation. Huh? You're not looking at the shoulder. You understand what I'm trying to say? No, sir. So if you're, if you keep your hand straight, okay? Okay. Okay, now, sir. If your distal humerus is internally rotated, to keep it straight, you're going to have to externally rotate it. Okay, sir. Now I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So automatically, you have it's like uh, femoral antiversion. Okay. If you have more femoral antiversion, you'll have more internal rotation in your hips than external rotation. Okay. So similar. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sure. And Avinas. No question. No question. Avinash knows it all. Yeah. Sir, uh, on the so basis of... you should of... ask Avinash some questions now. <laughs> Janki, you have got some Yeah. Questions? So, uh, you should know what are the common cases you get from the shoulder joint in, in your exam. Yes. You should know that at least. Yeah. You please tell. Okay, you know what is carriage sicca? The common thing first. No. Caries. On a presentation, yeah. we have it's caries sicca. Yeah, yeah. The tuberculosis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what 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 form of tuberculosis is it? Yeah. Anybody else? It is so dry. 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 So, so sir, I have one question. Yeah. Sir, on the uh, basis of shoulder rotation, uh, how to differentiate between supracondylar and lateral condyle injury? Why would you want to decide that on basis of shoulder rotation? Uh, no, sir. Uh, such a just uh, uh, suppose uh, delay uh, non union supracondylar or uh, delayed so uh, malunion. You, would, you would look at the elbow. Why would you? I mean, for your to differentiate. So, in, in a supracondylar fracture, what's the usual deformity? Yes. Cubitus varus. And what's the deformity in a non union of a lateral condyle fracture? Valgus. Valgus, so valgus deformity. Then you'll get. Yes, sir. 
you might get instability okay yes yes sir uh, so samit jamdar ask sir uh, uh, so you can tell by if there is more internal rotation then it's likely to be a supracondylar fracture okay Post yes sir supracondylar fracture it's unlikely to but you would not do that to make your diagnosis okay and, uh, and you should have a history of trauma also in that case so yeah, either way for either fracture you need a Ubiquitous virus also you love. Ah, Arvind is back. Yes. Okay. So, Can sir, we you... have lost you in between. Arvind, are you back or you're still? No, sir. Has... Yeah. yeah, but it's... so yeah, I'm connected with another network. So okay. I am there. I'm visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So this is the coronal plane. So this is this flexor is in Not coronal visible, plane. No. Sir, camera is not on. Sir, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we, I, I, we can visible. see him. So, yeah. So it, it is not. Yeah. yeah. You please demonstrate, sir. Then uh, after that, you can explain to us because so this uh, is the coronal plane and this is sagittal plane. Okay. So in this coronal plane, this is the standard uh, the flexor, and this is a standard abduction. This movement is external, but when uh, we say the in the plane of the scapula, so this is in between the standard abduction and standard flexion. So if you do like this, this is the uh, flexion in the plane of the scapula. So almost around twenty-five to thirty degree from the coronal plane. So this is the flexion in the plane of the scapula. So isn't it the other way around? It's turned in, isn't it? Pardon, sir. Capilla is internally rotated with respect to the thorax. So there's uh -huh. anterior of the glenoid. Yeah. So there is. Uh, so won't it be in slight adduction rather than abduction? In between the flexion and the abduction in the scapular plane. Because direction is something like this, not like this. yeah. The abduction will abduction will be in that plane, yeah. but flexion will be more anteriorly, yes. more anteriorly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's true, sir. Yeah. So direction of the glenoid is like yeah. this. In this. Yeah. Direction. So that's one. So flexion will be at right angles to that. Yeah. Which will be slightly more medially than laterally. Well, up. abduction will be between the planes of flexion and abduction yeah yes sir okay so is that i think that should be enough because it's already 7:30 okay so so thank you uh, everybody and thank you arvin for a excellent presentation and uh, i think we should now call it a day Yeah. Thanks, Thank Ashok. You, so, as usual, if you're still there. Sorry, sir. This photograph is there. <laughs> It's probably dealing with some other webinar somewhere. Okay. okay. So. Let's Thank you. Start. And one uh, one more thing I want to say about that uh, we have one uh, series of uh, classes on omnicurus also, uh, which is about the surgical techniques, and we are we have ankle fracture. Take uh, surgical tips and techniques tomorrow at six pm. So it's not just surgical. It's not basically surgical techniques. It's about yeah. periarticular fractures, basically. Yeah, mainly periarticular fractures. Tomorrow we are going to talk about ankle fractures, understanding yeah. them and how you deal with them. Yes. Okay. So. Okay. So. Thank you, sir. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Sure.